we went on using that same mind-body unity idea to do um, other exciting studies. So go fast forward to 2007, which is still now a while ago. We did a study with chambermaids, and it turns mm -hmm. out if you ask chambermaids, uh, do they get any exercise, they say no, because they think exercise is what you do after work, and they're just too tired. So we take these chambermaids, we divide them just into two groups, and we teach one group that their work is exercise. We show them that making a bed is like this or that machine at the gym and so on. So we have very, two different groups now. One thinks their work is exercise. One continues not realizing it's exercise. We take lots of measures. There's no difference on how hard they're working, how much they're eating, um, and things like that. But on the important measures, we get what we were expecting. We find that those who now see their work as exercise, just a simple change in their mindset, they lost weight, there was a change, a decrease in waist to hip ratio, um, body mass index, and their blood pressure came down, simply from changing their mindset. We have lots of these studies. Um, another one, um, you know, I'm, I'm strange, I know that. So when I'm in a doctor's office and they're giving me the Snelling eye chart, most people just take it, you go down the chart, the letters get smaller, you tell the physician what the letter is. To me, I say, wait a second, you know, here they're building in an expectation that soon I'm not going to be able to see. So go ahead and I do a study with my students where we reverse the eye chart. So now as you go down the chart, the letters are getting larger, thereby creating the expectation soon you will be able to see. And when that happens, people can see what they couldn't see before. For most people, you think you're going to have difficulty seeing around two-thirds of the way down the regular chart. So we start the chart a third of the way down. So two-thirds of the way from that are much smaller letters. And again, people can see what they couldn't see before. And remember, as I said before, that in the counterclockwise study, we also got an improvement in vision. So many of us, you know, we expect you go to the doctor, they give you a number, and then you just assume that that's true, which is, you know, to my mind, silly, you know, that if I'm hungry, I can see that restaurant sign much further away. In the afternoon, I don't see nearly as well as I do in the morning when I am you know, fully awake and so on. Um, so our vision as everything else changes. And at some point in this interview, I'll tell you about a series of studies with chronic illnesses, where by attending to those changes, rather than mindlessly holding things still, people can heal all sorts of um, problems that now they only seek medical help in order to heal. What the first set of studies testing the mind-body unity idea, we're all taking advantage of our mindlessness. So mm -hmm. let me give you an example of another one to make that. We had people who have uh, type 2 diabetes show up for a study, mm -hmm. and we were going to have them play computer games. And we told them what we want you to do is change the game you're playing every 15 minutes or so the, and to look at the clock next to the computer. That was just to ensure that they'd look at the clock. What we had was for a third of the people, the clock was going twice as fast as real time. For a third of the people, the clock was going half as fast as real time. And for a third of the people, it was real time. And the question we were asking was, would blood sugar level follow real or perceived time? And it followed perceived time. We had people in a sleep lab. They wake up, they see the clock. The clock says they got two hours more sleep than they got, actually got two hours fewer or the amount of sleep they got. And again, biological and cognitive functioning seems to follow perceived sleep rather than real sleep. All of these things saying that our thoughts are very, very important to, uh, to our health and well-being.